Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. You're very welcome to the programme. And where we are is we're at First the Hockle Presbyterian Church. So this is a Hockle in County Antrim. But this isn't really a church now, believe it or believe it not, because uh, it's actually a medical practice. So I'm going to take you into the foyer here. So as you can see it says, the God of peace be with you. And there's a wee knocker, so I'm going to knock. So this is actually a medical practice now. Um, but it used to be first a huckle. So that's a huckle dispensary. Annual report 1836. Found in the archives of Grace Hill Moravian Church, which is not too far from here. I've actually done a video of Grace Hill. That's the annual report. So if you want to uh, pause the video and zoom up and have a read of that, you can. So this is erected in 1762. The second year of the ministry of the Reverend James Cumming and in 1857 the 16th year of the ministry of the Reverend David Adams to the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the God whom we adore. And then it says there, erected 9th of October 1955 on completion of the tercentenary building and renovations. And it says here, the old meeting house renovated by Maine Medical Practice 2017. And you can see some of the artifacts there of the old uh, medical practices back in the day. And then that's an extract from Belfast and Ulster Towns Directory 1910, a hoggle. There's a couple of old chairs. So this is now uh, a medical practice. So it is. So, Little is known concerning the Presbyterians of Ahakal until October 1654. And in 1657, the people of Ahakal elected elders. Now, the Reverend John Shaw from Scotland was called and ordained as their first minister on the 30th of June, 1658. And their first meeting house would have probably been built with mud walls, to be honest, and a thatch roof, as the people back then in 1658 were poor and their houses were made of this material themselves. Now, the Reverend David Adams was ordained in First the Huckle on the 8th of June, 1841. And he ministered here for almost 40 years. So fantastic ministry he had here, obviously. And of course, during his ministry, there were two major events that took place. One being the building of a new church. And the other one being the 1859 Ulster Revival. Or as what came to be known as the Year of Grace. So even though this is a medical practice, <laughs> as you can see. There's a graveyard here because it was a church at one time. So the new meeting house was opened on the on Tuesday the 24th of August 1858. And it was opened just in time for the revival of the following year. And the stone that I showed you there in the vestibule which is, is great to have. It, uh, of course, the, the church was rebuilt in 1762, 
and in the second year of the ministry of the that was of the ministry of the Reverend James Cumming, and in 1857, in the 16th year of the ministry of the Reverend David Adams, the two men that is on the plaque there. So during the revival, a record of one of the meeting states, owing to the vast throng and there not being enough standing room in the church, it was deemed prudent to dismiss the meeting lest there might be some fatal accident from the falling in of the galleries which threatened to give way under the alarming pressure. Um, so certainly some amount of people there, no doubt about it. And they were scared then of people getting hurt with the galleries collapsing. Now permanent damage was done to the gallery at this time as the two pillars actually sank a couple of inches into the, uh, the ground and could be seen for the next 150 years until the church was closed and renovated to be used as the main medical practice. Amazing, isn't it? So a big connection here with the 1859 revival. Now, the crowd was estimated to be that at that time 3,000 in the new First Hackle Presbyterian Meeting House. So no wonder they were scared of the gallery falling. And thousands of ordinary folk who, they actually had their lives changed during the Year of Grace uh, with reports of men and women weeping in the streets of Ahackle. And when the church was vacated that day, the crowd spent upwards of three hours outside in the pouring rain, um, which was truly amazing. You wouldn't get that now. And of course they were worshipping and praising the Lord. So a lot of burials here, as you can see. And so the last service was held in the old meeting house on the 1st of September, 2013. And the new building was opened on the 7th of September. Sorry, on the, 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 the 7th of September, sorry, 2013. The uh, new building was opened and the last meeting and the old meeting house was the 1st of September 2013. So that's when it became uh, the main medical practice in the year 2013. So there you go. And of course, as you've seen, it's still being used as a medical practice today. So I suppose I better show you a couple of these graves. Um, this is just random now. I haven't looked to see who's buried in these. So this is in memory of the late Hugh Mackay and he's 1865, 27th of April, he died. So that's the Mackay family. Let's see who's buried in this one. That's William King of Ahackle. He died 1870, 17th of August. So I'll take you a wee walk down here. What a great history here. So as I say, the last service in the old church then was the 1st of September, 2013. And then it opened as the main medical practice on the 7th of September, 2013. There's one there, seen better days. I didn't think there was a graveyard here at all, let alone how big it is. Have a wee look at this one, see who this is. This is James Barr of Bala, 
Bala Montina, I think that is, in memory of his children. Samuel died 24th of June 1888. Maggie died 10th of July, same year, 1888, and so forth. So obviously they're still burying here because there's a fresh grave there, I assume. There's the bottom gate there. So we'll have a wee look at these, see if we can read these. This is Hugh Mackay, Luke, of, I'm not sure what that says, Mullen Sutton, 27th of October, 1875, he died. John Adams, look, he died 7, 1877. And then it goes on down. This is Margaret Allen Bell, 1876, 30th of March. She was only 37 when she died. Uh huh. Hard to make that one out. And you can see it's snow is lying here in the graveyard. Is this one? Hard to make that out too, that one. Unfortunately. That's Patrick Murdoch, Cully Backy. Not too far away. 1885, that one. Widowed, it says. Widowed. Fourth of May, I think that is. The number is missing there, as you can see. 1885. Age 42. There's 1866 November with that one. A hoggle. So I'm gonna wrap this wee video up very shortly because it's cold out here. See who this one is. Jane Cutter, husband of beloved wife of beloved wife Jane Cutter. That's eighteen fifty nine, twenty sixth of September. Hard to make out some of these. That's Robert Small, James Small. Eighteen sixty-two. 
the American Civil War was in action during 1861 to 1865, just to give you a wee bit of a, a reference. That's James Small of Bali somewhere, in memory of his father, Robert Small. He departed this life 12th of December, 1862. See, this one is. It's George Murdoch, I think that is. In memory of his mother, Eliza Murdoch. 1838, I think that is. Also his father, James Murdoch. 1902. There's a poke there. It's just 1892. Robert Chesney, son of, no, born, sorry, 12th of March, 1825. Died 10th of March, 1892. For that one. Haven't come across any ministers yet. You'd have thought you might have got a few ministers here. What's this one? This looks like it might have a wee bit of age to it. Hard to make out. I think that's... I'm not sure what that date says. January... That's 1982. It looked like an older one, but it's not. 1987. That's a more modern one. But it's hard to read. I don't think it's 18. I think it's 19. It's like 19 to me, anyway. Sarah... McCloy, I think it is, or something like that. Yeah, McCloy, that's what it is. It's the McCloy family. So there you go folks, I think we'll uh, wrap this wee video up and I'll try and get a bit of heat into me. So thanks for watching and God bless.